The Conistar Productions, in cooperation with Actors for Change, presents... Total as a mountain, and my hopes can reach to the sky. And my strength, my strength is my desire, and my dreams can help me fly. And the twistings of each road I'm on make me open up my eyes. Joy and sorrow are awaiting me at each turn as they arise. Each Turn by Bill Olson, starring John Tanzend as Jeff Adams. Also starring Mike Crookton. Deidre Kay, Dirley Mitchlink, and Mel Jackson. Episode 1, Dreams and Reality. Where the hell is that? Jeff, Edie. I'll bet he is too. Judy. Don't talk like that at the table. He's just studying. Nobody respects studying more than I do. You wouldn't have a roof over your heads if I hadn't studied in medical school. You mean if I hadn't helped you study in medical school. My point is that you cannot study 24 hours a day. Jeff, your food's getting cold. What's he studying in grad school anyway? International diplomacy. What the hell did he get his bachelor's in? Psychology, wasn't it? He ought to have his head examined studying crap like that. Then let's have him put away. You just mind your own P's and Q's, Judy. You have nothing to boast about either. I never, ever imagined I'd have a divorced daughter. I never even dreamed of it. Mmm, the food smells good, Mom. It's better hot. I can't eat hot food. It burns my mouth. Where is it? I'm getting it for you. I put it in the oven to keep it warm. Oh. Ha ha, you think you're going to manipulate Mom. She's got things figured out. Well, I'd like to have some things figured out. Like, how do you ever expect to make a living? There aren't too many opportunities in psychology for people with mental problems. I'm studying international relations. Yeah, I'd like to see how long you last when we have Republican presidents. Or if you got a job in a capitalistic international conglomerate. You're so good with kids, Jeff. Why don't you do something where you can work with kids? Yeah, I like kids. Maybe because I'm still kind of a kid. If you only knew how many jokes that opened you up to. The only opportunities that interest you, Judy, are the ones where you can put me down. Jeff, you've done nothing but waste your life. What did you do when you got out of high school? You wanted a career in the Navy, but you just... I did not want a career in the Navy. Just a six-year hitch. Well, whatever happened to that? I think it would have been good for you. I used to think that, too. Jeff, you're 24. You've never worked a day in your life. You've got it too good. Only because I've got the world's best parents. Well, they aren't going to be here forever. He's obviously going to be a professional student. Most honorable job in the world, Judy. It's called a college professor. College professors are a bunch of idiots. Then he's already prepared. A bunch of Democrats. Judy. What? At least I'm fully developed for my age. At least I use what I have. Listen, you cannot expect to live here forever, mooching off your mother and I. Of course, you're welcome to. Of course, you're welcome to. You've been getting good grades, Jeff, but what are you going to do with them? Maybe try to be an international diplomat. I really got turned on to that from studying in Mexico. All the young students think they're going to advance to the post of ambassador, but the only people who become ambassadors are the ones who give the winning presidential candidate the most money. It still seems more realistic than what I'd really like to do. Actually, I hope to be a writer and a filmmaker. Good, solid jobs with a wide open opportunity. I have no illusions about it, Judy. Just keep your mind on your studies. I keep my mind on my studies, Mom. I know what he can write, Mom. What? Romance novels. I'm not writing junk like that. But it'd be perfect. Nobody writes them who knows about real romance. You must have a pretty loose body if all your orifices are as big as your mouth. Jeff! Jeff. You want to step outside? 
little brother. If I tried to hit you in the nose, you'd only open your mouth and swallow my hand and me and the neighborhood. Jeff! I don't care if you are 25. If you're going... 24. 24, then. If you're going to be acting like that, you can finish your meal in the other room. No, thanks. I think I'll leave my meal for a while, but it is really good, Mom. At least somebody noticed. If you'll excuse me, please... So shoot me. I have my dreams. I also have reality looking me in the face. Reality is like an ancient dragon who's been terrorizing mankind since leaving Eden. He's old and ugly. Hey, watch it. <laughs> and he's content just to boldly go about his business. He'll scare you half to death if you look at him. But sometimes... He'll laugh a little, lean back in his big old chair, and hand you a rose. And you kind of appreciate reality for a minute there while you're smelling the scent. And, Ouch! Ah, damn thorns! But one thing you can count on, when old man reality smiles, there's nothing but honesty beneath it. You see him over there? Take a long, hard look. Many people try to avoid him. He kind of laughs at that. He's always watching me from somewhere, sometimes from around corners of buildings, or he peeks from behind a lamppost. I've come to be downright scared of him. I fear being confident and taking chances. Who am I, after all? I fear thinking I can do something that someone else maybe can't. How could I be so bold, after all? I fear trying to do things I've never done before. What do I know about doing this or that, after all? I fear daring to dream and thinking the dream can become reality. That's a sin, because it might question the ultimate authority of the great king, reality the first. Damn you, old man. You've slapped me in the face every time I've wanted something. Other people can have their dreams, why can't I? Over the years, I've wanted to be an astronaut, an astronomer, an airline pilot. But I didn't have the math proficiency. A firefighter, a law enforcement officer. When I went to college, it was with the hopes of fulfilling my true dream of becoming a novelist and filmmaker. But eventually, I tried to settle with realistic goals like clinical psychology, space psychology, forensic psychology, then international diplomacy. But writing has always been my first stage booster waiting for the opportunity to launch me on a successful career. Imagine the first Nobel Prize winning science fiction novelist. I wish you wouldn't gaze through my skin like that, Mr. Reality. I feel like I'm being x-rayed. Oh, Jeff, I'm just giving you my undivided attention. I wish you'd divide it a little more equally between good fortune and bad. Or is your math as bad as mine? Ah, uh, it's not a question of math. It's a question of possibilities. I allow all things to happen in life. The rose's sweet scent, <laughs> as well as its thorns. <laughs> I suppose a person just isn't realistic if he tries to argue with reality. Just the person I've been looking for. You feel a little down and out right now? Feel like the world's a big heavy bag on your shoulders? Well, I have just a solution. Get away on a beautiful holiday in the Bahamas. I represent a travel agency that can offer you the best... Thanks. I'm not interested. I agree with you completely. Save your money. What I have is something real fantastic. I have a knife here that cuts through wood. How much? Why, it's free for purchasing one of these beautiful collector edition plates for just $19.95. Send it to post office box 743. Thanks, not interested. I have wristwatches. I have neckties. Join the Midwest Anti-Nuclear Proliferation Rally. Join the National Association of Saintly Americans. Join the National Association Against Saintly Americans. Anti-Communism. Pro-Communism. Swear to your heart's desire, damn it. 
join the Navy. All right, everyone, get out of here. <clears throat> Girl Scout cookies? How much? Just $19.95 for a box of fresh homemade Girl Scout cookies. You can have chocolate, cream filled, gingerbread, peanut butter, vanilla. Diabetes runs on my dad's side of the family. Oh. All I want is to be a writer. And a filmmaker. I could give the world so much. Even if you have the talent, you don't know the system. You're too intellectual. They don't want 2001 A Space Odyssey. They want Star Wars. The industry will laugh at you if you come to them with your ideas. The movie Ordinary People. In space, there's an audience for quality science fiction movies. But how often do quality films of any kind ever make money? Whatever happened to the great Santini? What about A Room with a View? Gandhi? In fact, Ordinary People. Remember, most of the best films are small, independent ones that nobody knows about. Like the Europeans. You stink. Where are you going? What do you care? May I help you? Yes, Professor Lemura. I'm Jeff Adams. I understand the UW Eau Claire has a creative writing minor. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, have a seat, please. Uh, what do you want to know? Well, I'm not. Uh, that is, I'm, it's rather. I'm not too sure if I have any any potential. Maybe I mean, if you, if there's anything, if there's something you can tell me about it. Well, we teach some expository classes and creative writing. In a creating writing course I'm teaching right now, it's very interesting to see how the students can be drawn out into making good use of imagery and such. They're starting to do that now. I'm, I'm, well, you see, I'm, I'm actually, I, I'm into it. Well, I mean, it's that I'm, I would, I hope to be, well, a novelist and a, a filmmaker one day. Mm-hmm. Is, is there any record, I mean, that some students went and accomplished anything with this. Let me see now. Tell him about technical writing. Uh, yes, uh, it's possible you could get a good job doing technical writing. Uh, what's your major? Actually, I uh, graduated. I'm studying international relations at Tintagel Institute, but I might come back and take a few classes during the summer. Oh, you'll certainly be able to do technical writing in that field. You know, I think having a writing minor makes you more hireable. Writing really is a necessary part of any job. Tell him there is actually a chance that he will become a novelist. Uh, listen, I've really got to run to my class now. Tell him, damn it. It was very nice meeting you, Bill. Uh, Bill, is it? No, Jeff. Jeff Adams. Oh, man, I was really nervous. That sense, you were a trooper. A paratrooper without a shoot. And you didn't raise one finger to keep me from making a fool of myself. What was I supposed to do, Jeff? I don't know. Maybe if I'd had to rush off to the bathroom before I'd opened my stupid mouth, that sure would have helped, Mr. Reality. Next time, drink more water beforehand. Huh? What next time? Look, I read someplace that writers write. Really? I've never heard that one before. You probably read it in Webster's. Remember, Jeff, I never would have read it any place if everyone felt as confident about their writing as you. Have you ever actually written anything? I am working on a few ideas. How long do you spend writing in a day? Not much. Aha! I've got school every day. Surely, Jeff, you have hours you don't do anything productive. You can write then. Maybe I'm not good enough to be a writer. Would Shakespeare, Hemingway, or, or Woody Allen be any good if they only talked about writing? I said I've done some writing. Hey. Maybe if you take a look at some of my works and told some of Every you... critic in the world is part of me. I'm reality, after all. You've forgotten how well you know me. <laughs> I'm the guy that told Harlan Ellison he'd make more money selling his typewriter to a vagabond. And you were wrong. Which goes to show you, don't listen to anyone but yourself. And if you listen to yourself, you better be positive and daring. Reality was right. I did have spare time between studies. I began writing short things I call writing doodles. Some had potential for longer stories. Many were just dialogues that ran from a few lines to a few pages. They were like radio dramas, 
Unfortunately, radio drama is dead, but the practice might lead to something. Eventually, I wrote a story about future spies getting injected with a chemical that turns them to dust if they die. A guy's in the desert, sick to his stomach as the wind blows this pink dust into his face, his eyes, his throat. The dust turns out to be his wife, a spy who died. That's not a bad article, Jeff. Where did you steal it from? It's a story, Dad, not an article. But I'll take that as a compliment. Why did that guy in your article throw up so much? Because, Judy, he knew you were reading about him. You make me sick. You're gonna throw up? Yeah, right on your story. Good. It'll increase the realism. Jeff finally got the courage to send a story to a magazine. He won't get published, at least not at this time. But he needs to try because failure is rarely 100%, especially when you work hard to succeed. Jeff's fear of failure is a handicap he'll always have to deal with. But I'm reality. I'm the one everyone blames. Okay, it is my fault. I deal the cards. I don't laugh if you get the ace of spades. Neither do I cry. I simply go about my business dealing cards. I have no hopes or dreams of my own, but Jeff's family does. Dr. Adams, Jeff's dad, for instance. Now tell me, Dr. Adams, what are your dreams as you face reality? I just wish lawyers would try to put themselves out of business the way dentists do. Dentists go to elementary schools and teach children how to care for their teeth. If the children listen, the dentists will go broke, and they know this. But lawyers perpetuate their profession, for example, by deciding the language of law. So a basic concept like intent is perverted from implicit clarity to a complicated system of preventing loopholes. The loophole is a lawyer invention to keep themselves in business by using language only a lawyer can write, only a lawyer can decipher, justified by the lawyer-perpetuated custom that some other lawyer will find and exploit a loophole. But the wording chosen by the lawyer writing the contract protects you. You have not been listening. Lawyers are like children whose clients are children. Children who do not want to go to bed at 10 p.m. or who do not want to eat their peas or study their math. It signifies a decay of responsibility and mutual respect. If there's a breakdown in responsibility and mutual respect, Dr. Adams, the lawyers are needed to protect people from that. That's a bunch of bull because lawyers make the rules. Rules that say they have to be precise or we invite attack. Rules that say attacking to exploit loopholes, despite obvious intent, is acceptable. Rules that say we have to have lawyers. And this means they can charge us whatever they'd like because they have us by the b It should not be like that. Jeff's mom, Rachel, has her dreams, too. I sure do. Vic and I are getting on in years, and I'd like him to retire so we can travel to all the places we talked about when we were young, dumb, and in love. I've told him many times, Vic, if you retire, I'll retire. I'm a journalist, you see. Oh. And how do you feel about your son, Jeff, wanting to follow in your footsteps to become a writer? Jeff is more idealistic than I am. Journalism is a relatively practical approach to career writing, but Jeff wants to be a novelist. Very few novelists can live off their writing. But that's the way Jeff is. He's very idealistic. And I know he thinks his writing is going to change the world, make a difference. But such dreamers don't see how big reality is. Oh, no offense. <laughs> Quite all right. People often comment about my weight. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so many people give up everything for their chance at stardom. They're writers, actors, musicians. They work odd jobs, never able to afford health insurance or a nest egg. I'm afraid that's what Jeff is setting himself up for.
Judy is the last member of the family, the only daughter, the oldest child. What are your dreams, Judy? I wish people would respect me. Maybe it's that I'm a woman. No one respects women. Well, listen, I have to go now. But I'm not finished. No one respects me. I, no one. I'm sorry, but I really have to leave. No, you're not, damn it. Give me that microphone. Give it here. Okay, you can have the microphone. You see, I have to fight. To fight to get respect. That's the way life is. I have this fear that one day I'll get too tired, too frustrated, or too frail to fight back. I'd rather kill myself than be weak, be unable to defend myself. People will walk right over you. They'll never look back except to gloat. And women are easy targets because we're physically weaker. My big dream, my really big dream is to be in charge of my life like to run my own business or something, and to make it a success so nobody can question me. Then I could be less defensive. I would love to let my femininity show. I'd smile more. All I need is to be in charge so I can relax and not be on the defensive. I think I'm beginning to respect you. Me? Really? Most certainly. A note to the audience. <laughs> I lied when I told Judy I respected her. I'm reality. I neither respect nor disrespect anyone. I just deal out the cards. <laughs> but I thought she needed to hear something nice. Hey, look. I got my story back from the magazine. I wonder if they liked it. Open it, Jeff, and let's see. We regret that we cannot use your material at this time. This in no way reflects upon the qual... Hell with it. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a writer, or a filmmaker, or an international diplomat, or a respectable human being. Maybe I'll pursue psychology again. I already have a degree in it people out there in the field helping those with problems, behavioral treatment programs, clinical evaluations, counseling, therapy, legal hassles, challenge, drama, commitment, turmoil. Man, what a story that would make. I better go write this down. Well, I'm glad he didn't ask my opinion. Each turn was produced, written, and directed by Bill Olson. The associate producer was John Tanzend. Episode 1, Dreams and Reality, starred John Tanzend as Jeff Adams, Mike Crupton as Jeff's father, Deidre Kay as Jeff's mother, Darley Mitchlink as Judy, Bill Olson as the travel agent, and Mel Jackson as reality. The music was by John White. My name is Siobhan Parnicky. The producers wish to thank CTV Roseville and Cable Access St. Paul, both in Minnesota. All persons and situations in this radio drama are fictitious. Any similarities to actual persons living or dead is strictly coincidental. Each turn is copyrighted 1995 by Bill Olson.